Masks are symbolically entwined within the lore of Terminus world. There's ceremonial masks that merge together and bring good luck to newlyweds, and traditional masks honoring the giants that protect this realm. These objects hang all throughout Clocktown as a visual reminder, but not all of them are used for grandma's tales or to challenge you philosophically. There are 29 masks in total the player must gather throughout their adventure, with 24 able to be donned by the Hero of Time. This right-hand column depicts the transformation masks, allowing Link to take on new forms ranging from a giant version of himself to a literal god. Everything else is given the label Happy Mask and functions somewhat similarly to their use in Ocarina of Time. Link can put these on for a cosmetic change, and they have a small use on the field in that characters can react to whatever you're wearing. This has been expanded from merely a trading side quest though, and now just about all Happy Masks grant a sort of light ability to solve specific puzzles, some much more useful than others. For the second week of my Majora's Mask month, I'll be counting down the best of these Happy Masks, sorting them by aspects like practicality, story contribution, and of course, their coolness factor. The first of these 10 is Cafe's Mask. I might be the only person on YouTube who would put it on a list like this because it's kind of ugly, but hear me out. I think it emanates what Majora's Mask is all about. You are someone else when putting on any mask in this game, and NPCs will act differently depending on who you are. For example, if you're Goron or Zora Link, you have the body of an adult. The guards won't see you as a child, and you're free to pass without having to prove yourself first. Cafe's mask is the face of a lost Clocktown resident, known to everybody as the mayor's son. It's given by Cafe's mother with purpose to inquire about his whereabouts, putting you in the shoes of an investigator. It rewards exploration and requires the player to physically go around and talk to as many people as they can, invoking different responses to see if anyone knows where he is. So who is he, exactly? A fiancé to Stockpot Inn owner Anju, transformed into a kid by the game's antagonist. Additionally, his ceremonial wedding mask I mentioned at the start of this video was stolen, which causes the man-child to go into hiding until he locates the thief. With little hope for Cafe's return and no explanation as to why he's disappeared, Anju's mother will begin to loathe her would-be son-in-law and wrongly assume he's left Anju for her best friend Creamia. Infidelity is some pretty heavy stuff to tackle in a Zelda game, but it yields hilarious responses with everyone involved. If worn in front of Anju's mom, the otherwise expressionless woman will become infuriated and shout at Link, and wearing it in front of Creamy is even better. She'll glare at you and ask if a certain nosy middle-aged woman put you up to the task of looking for him here, and that he's not at the ranch. It gets even spicier when Romani reveals her older sister's crush on the man, hinting at a true romantic entanglement. I love Cafe's mask, so it's the starting entry on here. See, even Anju loves it, and she has one of her very own and is definitely not crying underneath it. It looks like it's beginning to rain. Number 9 is the Garo mask, and it has a badass design in the original. It's a full hood to resemble Garo robes, the ghosts of Icona Valley spies. Link can summon them after Tattle creepily senses a thirst for blood, where they will attempt to assassinate him upon realizing that the child is not one of their own. Kind of. They actually mistake Link for their master, but this never really made sense as the hood gives him the appearance of a standard Garo, so this was fittingly fixed in the 3DS version. The Garo Master miniboss fought in the last temple actually looks like this, an oversight that is a welcomed change. The new Gara Mask still looks pretty sleek in its design, and has no differing effect in how it's used. After winning it from the notorious Gorman brothers, who donned the mask to intimidate Creamia when attempting to sabotage her milk delivery, it's used to access Ikana and talk to Gara robes for information about the canyon. Upon revealing hints about the area, they will die without a corpse as part of their species' code of honor. This mask, along with the Gibdo and Captain's hat, can even be used to completely avoid the Rededs in the ancient castle of Ikana. Since these undead enemies were part of the royal family's dance troupe while living, these masks will cause them to drop any hostility and break out in style. Next up is the, uh, adults-only Romani's mask. 
One of my favorite places in Majora's Mask is the milk bar. I think it's funny that this is the way Nintendo censors alcohol. I mean, there's a character that gets tipsy from milk and is hung over the next day. To gain access to this fine establishment, the underage hero needs proof of membership. And Romani's Mask is that proof. It's gifted by Creamia when her cargo is saved from the aforementioned Gorman Brothers. If you're wondering why it's a cow mask that also acknowledges adulthood, it's because the bar is completely themed after heifers after all. And since their milk is sourced from Romani's ranch, it makes sense to imagine Creamia as the one that initiates new members, as she's able to make the masks. Beyond speculation, it serves a pretty grim story purpose. On the night of the final day, right before the moon crashes into and kills all of Termina, Creamia acknowledges Romani as an adult. She promises to make her younger sister a mask of her own, and will allow her a taste of the forbidden milk called Chatu Romani. The reason is heavily implied to be that Creamia knows this will be their last night together, their last night alive, so she wants her little sister to experience the drink. If we want to get even darker, this could also be interpreted as Creamia giving her sister a bit of alcohol to dull her senses when the moon hits. Beyond that side story though, the mask yields physical reward, as a loud entrance to the bar means ability to purchase heart replenishing milk for a reasonable price, and the exclusive Chatu Romani. This Kumis inspired drink is super helpful in that it replenishes all health and gives an unlimited magic meter until the player resets time back to the first day. An unstoppable Goron roll and completely unrestricted use of the double helix sword? Yes, please. The music that plays inside the bar too is honestly one of the greater examples of this game's superb soundtrack. Lucky number 7 is the Bremen Mask, and it's one of the easiest to get. All the player has to do is sit through the story of a man who is jealous of a group's leader and feels guilt by thieving his authority. He will pass this guilt on to you, a mask that allows Link to parade around and lead young animals. Its function is simply to get a different better mask by hatching chicks into roosters, because this is how maturation works apparently, but more importantly invoking a good laugh when used against Egos Duacana's soldiers. These servants of the king will be confused at first in an otherwise serious boss encounter, but once the ocarina plays this melody the two will joyfully march around with the player until they're ready to get back into the action. Alright, so I doubt many lists would have this mask so close to the top, but my reasoning is valid. First of all, the All Night Mask is creepy. A gossip stone reveals that this mask is actually a torture device, forcing the victim to stay awake even if they don't want it. It's purchased at the already shady curiosity shop for the most money Link can hold at one time, and has a terrifying design made of an all black material and what looks like bloodshot eyes. This mask also gives Link two pieces of heart instead of just one, and lets the player hear origin of Termina's giants and the annual Clocktown Carnival. More story in a game like this is always a good thing, even if you have to go broke to own it. At number 5, and speaking of eerie, I say again that conversing with the dead is an interesting concept. So of all the masks that allow you to do this, the captain's hat is the best. It's much more satisfying than taking demands from Gibdos as part of a fetch quest, as the role is reversed here with this mask putting Link in charge of the Stahl children that wander Icona Graveyard at night. Link can order them to smash open the gravestones they're guarding, which reveal hidden underground rooms that change each day, and will yield a separate amazing reward three times, that being the Song of Storms, a heart piece, and an empty bottle. It can also be used to gather secret information from the Stahl children in the Oceanside Spider House, which is key in unlocking a passageway to find yet another piece of heart. At number 4 we have the incredibly helpful Blast Mask for use when you're out of bombs and need some ammunition against an enemy or to blow a hole through a crack in the wall. This is especially useful in Majora's Mask, when you reset time, lose all bombs and forget to restock when venturing out. I find it kind of hilarious that it explodes on Link's face, although he understandably takes damage from it. This drawback feature can be overwritten though, as the player can use their shield before detonating and not get hurt. How this works is beyond me, but it makes this convenient mask even more handy. 
I found myself using this mask in place of bombs even when I had plenty, as it's more efficient to just tap a button and be ready to blow up whatever needs it, instead of taking one out and waiting for it to explode. This mask gives Link a chance to attack underwater in his human form too, a benefit otherwise not possible with normal bombs. Next up we have one of the scariest masks in the game, but unlike the All Night mask with creepy lore and design, this one is simply disturbing to look at. The Great Fairy's mask is not very beloved. It's admittedly ugly, but it gives Link some pretty gorgeous locks of pink hair that even sparkle when he's close to a stray fairy. But let's back up a bit, because that sparkle effect is not just aesthetically fabulous. The hair glimmers when near one of the 15 stray fairies scattered throughout each of the four main dungeons, but it's so helpful in finding them because when there aren't any left in a room, the mask's hair will stop shining. Therefore, one can search every nook and cranny until they're all uncovered, to which the player can move on and focus in the next room. This doesn't just give clues as to where they are though, as when it's worn, any wandering stray fairies, or fairies freed from bubbles, are attracted to the mask and will find their way to you. This is the happy mask I got the most use out of from my most recent playthrough, because it's necessary for these four side quests, and something I always had on a dedicated button throughout the dungeons. And the rewards you get for finding them all are undisputedly the best in game. A permanent defense boost, magic meter extension, the great fairy sword, and the less useful but still effective magic spin attack with longer reach. In Majora's Mask, it doesn't even need to be charged up by holding the attack button. One can simply rotate the control stick rapidly and swing to quickly activate it. Once I realized this, I started using the move more and more, and I really began appreciating it since. The Mask of Truth is one of the masks in this game that has an extraordinary amount of uses. Every Gossip Stone Link passes by has unique dialogue, providing information to the player about where to find certain items, heart pieces, and masks within the game's world. But it's like a hint system with charm, as by the name implies, the stones gossip and reveal more than necessary sometimes, by giving interesting bits of lore like what I mentioned about the All Night Mask. Besides this, it also allows the player to read the thoughts of animals, granting Link the ability to cheat and find out which dog is most energetic to choose for his representative on the racetrack. It also reveals the thoughts of every other dog in the game, including the deco-hating mutt roaming Clocktown Center, the pet of this mask's original owner, and Romani's dog. The mask is given an added benefit in the 3DS version too, replacing Ocarina of Time's Stone or Shard of Agony by visually revealing hidden grottos. If I haven't convinced you yet as to why it's so high on here, just look at this amazing art of Link holding it on the cover of Majora's Mask 3D. It's too cool. Have you ever played Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, or any Zelda game really, and spammed the roll button in an open plane in hopes that the character is moving just a little bit faster? What if we were to replace that little bit with a lot and get rid of his unending grunting? With almost no question, the greatest happy mask in this game is the adorable Bunny Hood. I know it's a favorite to many, apparent by its continued use in the Smash Bros series, granting a speed boost that allows Link to both jump further and run faster. I used to have this thing always equipped, and I still do when I'm playing as Link. However, over time I started using it less and less, when I realized it's much easier to just use the Goron Mask instead. But with that said, the Goron Mask is not a replacement, and it does have its own special uses. These include boss fights where Link is preferred, and closed quarters of dungeons that require hopping from ledge to ledge. With more distance able to be cleared, it's even possible to bypass certain sections you'd otherwise need an item for. For example, the Swamp Spider House wants me to plant magic beans in this patch of soft soil, water them, and use the platform to get across. But I was able to simply clear the gap with my newfound bunny power. That's awesome, but other than that it aids in select scenarios like racing the tricky Deku Butler and the battle against Captain Kita, in which firewalls prevent the player from catching up to him. The Bunny Hood even essentially gives the player a heart piece, making the mental training minigame issued by the postman a heck of a lot easier by revealing a timer. None of these things are necessary, but it's like a power-up. 
It's nice to have, and regardless of its specific uses, anything that speeds up Link's default movement is very welcomed. There's not a ton of reaction to your yellow ears from NPCs, but this swordsman gives some hilarious dialogue telling you not to get your bunny dirty in the dojo. Regardless, it is made up for as every cutscene with Link is now that much better, as they even have their own floppy animation physics. I can't really complain because it adds a ton of charm to the game this way. But the real reason I love this mask so much is because when paired with the Great Fairy Sword, you feel unstoppable. A speedy killing machine that feels almost as cool as the Fierce Deity, but not at all really because you can wear it anywhere, and you're still just a 10 year old in bunny cosplay. Again everybody, thank you so much for watching the second episode of my Majora's Mask Month. I've been working hard on these, it's a long time coming, so I hope you enjoy them. Thank you again and I'll see you for the third video.